Hello everyone and welcome back to our class. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to subtract common fractions. And we have some objectives. First objective is that we want to subtract a common fraction, um, subtract common fractions with the same denominator. Second, we want to subtract a common fraction from a whole number. Then we want to subtract a common fraction from another common fraction. And then we subtract common fractions where mixed numbers are involved. So let's start, and let's start with a picture. Suppose we have a chocolate bar, and that cho chocolate bar is made up of 12 tiny bars. So that those 12 tiny bars, notice, 4, 8, 12, 12 tiny bars, and that number forms our denominator. Notice that nine bars are left out of our chocolate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bars are left, and that is our numerator here. So we have nine out of 12 bars remaining, and we want to eat five of those 12 bars. So we have nine out of 12, and we want to eat five out of 12. How many will remain when we eat the five pieces? Well, you can say, okay then, since we want to eat five pieces and we have nine pieces out of 12, then let's eat five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Five pieces are gone, which means that we have one, two, three, four pieces remaining. And so nine out of 12 minus five out of 12 gives us four out of 12. And that's exactly how we go about subtracting two fractions that have the same denominator. As long as the denominators are the same, notice that they are both 12, then we can just go ahead and subtract the numerators. So we can just write it, subtract the numerators. And so we have 9, take away 5, out of 12, and that leaves us with 4 out of 12. Of course, 4 over 12 is a fraction that's equivalent to 1 over 3. But this is our answer. And if you wanted to, this is also the answer. Now, let's look at uh, another question. Here, we have a hole represented by our 1, or one hole. Let's say it's a pudding, and we want to cut that pudding in five pieces, and we want to eat two of those pieces. How many pieces would be left when we eat the two? Well, if we eat these two, then we notice that we have one, two, three pieces left. Now, if we're doing this without the picture, then one minus two over five will tell us that we need to rewrite this number rewrite it so we rewrite this number using the denominator for the fraction so we want to take out two fifths so we are going to use this five and rewrite the one we're going to write it as five over five no five over five is one and then we take out our two over five notice now that both have the same denominator and because that is true, we can simply go ahead and say 5, take away 2, over 5, leaves us with 3, over 5. So if you have a whole 1, and you're taking out 2 over 5, or 2 fifths, then what will remain is 3 fifths. And you can do that with the pictures, or you can do it um, you, by rewriting the 1 as 5 over 5. Now suppose the number is not 5. Suppose you have 5 donuts and you want to eat 3 quarter of 1 donut. Then how, more, how many donuts will be left or how much donuts will you have left? Let's draw some donuts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 donuts and we want to eat 3 quarters of 1. So then let's cut this one into equal pieces. And now we have cut it into four equal pieces. And we're going to eat three of those. One, two, three. Then how many donuts do we have left? We have four donuts, four whole donuts. And we have one piece 
out of the four pieces that this one was cut into. So we have four and a quarter. So how do we do this then? Notice we have to rewrite this five as well. But five is the same thing as four plus one. So we're going to take this one and write it using the denominator for this fraction. So we have four plus four over four. Or remember four over four is one. So this is actually saying four plus one, which is still our five. And then we're going to subtract from that three out of four. Now notice these two now have the same denominator. And because they do, we can simply say four take away three here. Four take away three gives us one over four. And so our answer would be four whole. That's this four. And the quarter that is left from the one that we ate from. So our answer is four and a quarter. So in subtracting a fraction from a whole number, we simply need to rewrite this whole using the denominator for our fraction. So because our denominator is five, we rewrite this as five over five and do the subtraction. And here, because we have five, we split our five into four plus one because we're only going to take piece of one. And then we proceed by writing that one as four over four because our denominator is four and then subtract three and we end up with our quarter. So our answer is four and a quarter. Now, what if we have a question like this? What if we have three fifths minus a quarter? This one is not so straightforward. Here, we have different denominators. And the way to get around it is that we need to rename the fractions or we need to write equivalent versions of these fractions. As we did when we were doing addition, we need to take this denominator for the, for the quarter, which is four, and multiply these two, the numerator and the denominator for the three-fifths. Then we take the five for the three-fifths, which is its denominator, and multiply these two. Now, once we do that, we are going to ensure that when we are finished, both fractions will have the same denominator or they will have equivalent versions of themselves which have the same denominator. Now, let's multiply. 4 times 3 gives us 12 and 4 fives gives us 20 minus 5 ones are 5 and 5 fours are 20. So 3 fifths is equivalent to 12 over 20 and a quarter is equivalent to 5 over 20. Now they have the same denominator. So we can go ahead and subtract the numerators by saying 12 take away 5 over 20 and that gives us 7 over 20. And that's our answer right there. So we simply take those fractions, rename them so that they have the same denominators, and then we subtract the numerators. So we need to rename first. What if we have mixed numbers now? So here we have 3 and a third minus 2 and 4 fifths. We can say... We put the whole numbers together first, so we can say 3 take away 2, that leaves us with 1, and then now we have to subtract the fractions. So we write down 1 third minus 4 over 5. Again, these are different denominators, so we will have to rename them. So we take the 5, multiply, both numerator and denominator, remember. And then we take the 3, multiply both numerator and denominator. And we end up with 5 over 15 minus 12 over 15. Then 5 minus 12 gives us negative 7 over 15. And so our question is not quite finished. We have to say now 1 take away 7 over 15. So we have to work this out again. 
And 1 minus 7 over 15 means that we're going to have to write 15 over 15 minus 7 over 15, which gives us 8 over 15. Now, sometimes this happens when you're subtracting. Because this part of the fraction is larger than the part you're subtracting it from, it ends up where you have to do a lot of work in subtracting. So you end up with a negative number here, which you may not want to run into. So as a rule, when we're subtracting these kind of questions, we tend to say to our students, change these mixed numbers to improper fractions first, and then you go ahead and do the, the, the subtraction. So here, let me rewrite it over here, 3 and a third. 3 and a third minus 2 and 4 fifths. These are mixed numbers. And remember, mixed numbers can be rewritten as improper fractions. We multiply here and add the numerator. So we say 3 times 3 and 9, and 9 plus 1 gives us 10 over 3 minus. Multiply here and add the numerator. So 5 plus 10 plus 2, 14. And now that we have this, we are going to rename them. Same procedure. We are going to take our 5 and multiply this, this numerator and this denominator. And then we take the 3 and multiply this numerator and this denominator. Now remember, the aim in, in renaming them is to ensure that you have the same denominator at the end. Now let's look at it. 5 times 10 gives us 50. Over 5 times 3 gives us 15. Minus 3 times 14 gives us 42. And 3 times 5 gives us 15. So now 50 take away 42 leaves us with 8 over 15. Notice that it takes a lot less work doing it this way than doing it that way. It is not a problem doing it this way if you want to, once you understand what you're doing. Just that it tends to work out a little bit cleaner when you're working it this way. So first, change your mixed numbers to improper fractions. And once you have changed them to improper fractions, then you rename them and continue your subtraction. That is done in order to avoid a problem where you have to end up working twice. Here we have one more question. Mr. Blake bought three and a half meters of wire. If he used one and five, six meters in doing a job, how many meters of wire were left? So here we have our question, three and a half meters of wire, take away one and five, six meters of wire. In order to avoid the problem of us subtracting a bigger fraction from a smaller fraction, notice that five, six will be bigger than a half, we're just going to go ahead and change these to improper fractions first. So we multiply here, two threes are six, plus that one, that gives us seven over two, minus six ones are six, plus five, that gives us 11 over six. Now we are subtracting seven over two minus 11 over six. We want these two fractions to have the same denominator. Now notice, we could use this 6 to multiply here, the, this numerator and this denominator, and use the 2 to multiply that numerator and that denominator. In this case, though, there's a simpler way to do it. Notice that if we multiply this numerator, this denominator by 3, we will end up getting 6. So if we multiply here by 3, then we end up getting 6. And both will have the same denominator. So 3 sevens will become 21. And 3 twos will become 6 minus 11 over 6. If we had gone ahead and used the 6 to multiply, the question would still be correct. Now, let's take away. They both have the same denominator. So we can simply say now 21 minus 11 over 6, and that gives us 10 over 6. Now, in terms of meters of wire, how many meters are left? We can take a 6 from 10, 
So one meter would be left, and there's a four remaining. Remaining, remaining. So six from ten is four. So we'd have one meter and four sixths of a meter. Remember that you can find more past and practice questions on our website at www.csecmathtutor.com. Remember to subscribe and share as you continue to learn and grow. Thank you for watching.